This is part one of the three part series on 10 emerging technologies in the field of chemistry with the potential to revolutionize the world. This video is for researchers like you who are eager to start off their research career. So without further ado, let's get started. So the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, which all of you might be knowing, is an uh, organization which is responsible for standardizing various chemical notations. In the year 2019, uh, decided to come up with uh, 10 emerging technologies which are sustainable and have the potential to revolutionize the world. Uh, now, I could have listed all 30 technologies because every year they come up with 10 nominations. So in 2019, they came up with 10, then 20 and then 21. So up till now, they have come up with 30 emerging technologies, right? But you have to understand that the, that the emerging technologies do not change in a couple of years. Uh, they are still at different stages in their development, right? So even the ones that were nominated in 2019 um, are still uh, widely applicable today as well. They are still emerging technologies, just saying. All right. Um, so uh, instead of coming up with the 30 emerging technologies, I decided to bisect it into three different videos because uh, I might also want to explain some of these emerging technologies, like go a bit into the detail to help you understand rather than rather than just, you know, listing them out. So this is the list of 10 technologies uh, that were introduced in 2019 or that were identified as emerging technologies in the year 2019. Um, so it's nanopesticides, um, enantial selective organocatalysis, uh, which you all of you know the 2021 Nobel Prize was also awarded for the same. Uh, then we have solid state batteries, uh, uh, one of the active researchers in the field. In fact, if you talk about battery sciences, then the, in the year 2019, uh, the Nobel Prize was again uh, again given for identification of lithium-ion batteries or discovery of lithium-ion batteries. Then we have flow chemistry, reactive extrusion, metal organic frameworks, uh, directed evolution of selective enzymes, uh, turning plastics in, uh, to monomers, reversible deactivation of radical polymerization, and 3D bioprinting. So if you talk about enantial selective organocatalysis, uh, this might be a well-known field to many of you now thanks thanks to the 2021 uh, Nobel Prize um, that was awarded. Now organocatalysis as the name suggests it is a much better alternative uh, than the metal uh, catalysis of course because you know metal causes a lot of contamination and it's not really abundant as well. So organocatalysis is definitely a viable alternative but still there are even though a lot of research has been done on organocatalysis uh, still there are domains uh, which are yet to be explored for example one key disadvantage of organocatalysis is that you still need to have a very high catalyst loading okay that means the amount of catalyst that is used uh, that is pretty high as compared to metal catalysis apart from the catalyst loading the second thing is the waste that is generated or the recyclability okay so the re extracting metal out of uh, you know uh, out of let's say uh, a mix of chemicals is comparatively easier also just to give you an idea uh, in this topic uh, there might be many active researchers uh, but i have listed down two researchers uh, that is do dr uh, uh, rama sastri and dr vijay anand from isar mohali who are actively working in the field of financial selective organocatalysis okay it's not a recommendation it's just a sort of uh, just to give you an idea that who are the Indian researchers that are working in this particular domain. So I just picked out two from Aysar Mohali. There might be many, many more. Again, I would just like to emphasize it's not a recommendation whether you should join their lab or not. It's just uh, something that I found out. In fact, uh, many of you do ask me how do we find researchers in a particular area, uh, especially who are working in India. It's very simple. Let's say if you want to work in IITs or you want to work in JNCSR or if you want to work in IIC Bangalore or if you want to work in ICERS, depending on which institute you prefer, um, you can, okay, so let's say the topic is uh, enantial selective organocatalysis, okay. So just Google enantial selective organocatalysis and then type ICER, IIT, JNCSR. Whosoever is basically working in that particular domain, you will get some links. Click on those links and I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to find out who are the active researchers that are working in this particular domain. So that is a very simple simple way to understand which Indian researchers are working in this particular domain on, on any domain that you are interested in. Also a fun fact, I also worked on enantial selective organocatalysis in uh, my MSc project. The second research domain that I would like to elaborate on is solid state batteries. Uh, now this is this has a lot of potential there's still a lot of debate whether it can be co converted into something which is commercial 
um it is still at uh, it is still being researched but there have been many claims that you can see it in uh, you know in 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 your green vehicles uh by the year 2025 in fact a company which, uh, is headed by the ceo jagdeep singh has uh uh in fact uh, you know uh, partnered with the uh, uh, uh Volkswagen and is also backed by investors like Bill Gates and they have claimed by that by the year 2025 you could see uh you know um electronic vehicles um with solid state batteries within them so there's it's it's still a very highly um, debated thing whether solid state batteries do have the advantages in fact in academic circles they have demonstrated that there are in fact great advantages of solid state batteries over liquid batteries for example uh, the capacity of solid state batteries is really high if we talk about safety um solid state batteries are deemed more safe than uh, than you know lithium ion batteries for example because they can contain liquid electrolytes so the whole concept of solid state batteries is that you have a solid electrolyte in fact uh, a professor john goodenough who also was awarded the 2019 nobel prize for lithium ion batteries um was uh, is had act- actually in the year 2016 uh, proposed a solid state battery or in fact experimented with a solid state battery where the electrolyte was glass okay so you can read more about it uh, but the whole aspect over here is that uh, like i said it has more um, storage capacity um, as compared to li- liquid batteries and then second is the safety because you have a solid electrolyte uh, rather than the uh, liquid electrolyte okay that is also one of the reasons why you are not allowed to carry um, you know like lithium ion batteries in in check in baggage uh, when you go f- uh, when you travel by uh, aeroplane because it could leak and it could you know it, since it's flammable flammable it can you know catch a fire and then there's no way to douse it if it's in mid air all right and i was able to find one professor from iit bombay professor sagar mitra who is actively working in the field of solid state batteries um he works in the department of energy energy sciences in iit bombay the next topic that is metal organic frameworks is is actually a very uh, uh, a very sought after topic particularly on the interface of you know organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry it has a lot of applications okay so what exactly is a metal organic framework is basically um as the name suggests it's it's uh, it's a metal which is coordinated uh, to a cluster of organic ligands and uh, it could be one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional okay so it has a lot of advantages and it has like no i don't i don't know about advantages but yeah applications okay so the applications are in in the domain of let's say carbon capture basically if you have to capture co2 uh, in 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 terms of hydrogen storage it has been uh, it has been explored in the terms of hydrogen storage uh, catalysis and uh, why metal organic frameworks are so popular is that uh, depending on the organic ligand and the metal that you are using so these metal organic frameworks have certain small pores within them okay so you can vary this pore size depending upon a lot of factors for example if you are using a different kind of organic ligand or if you are using a different metal or you are you, you know you are using different processing techniques to synthesize that metal organic framework so depending on all these cases you can actually uh, you know vary the pore size Dep- you can customize the pore size depending on your application so that is why it has become so 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 much popular all right and uh, one of the best um, applications of metal organic frameworks that i personally found was when i read a study which basically uh, you know because what they hypothesize is that if it can capture some certain kinds of water molecules uh, certain kinds of molecules um, then it might also be able to capture water okay so they did this experiment in a very dry desert okay somewhere in us and what they found uh, that these metal organic frameworks can basically if the air let's say has 20 or 30% humidity this these metal organic frameworks can capture the the you know the water molecules selectively and uh, you can get drinkable water from that so that was a very fascinating study in fact they showed that if you use 1 kg of metal organic framework um you can get 2.8 liters of water per day but you also need to understand that you might again think that this is something that has already been done so so where is the potential to you know improve there is always a lot of potential to improve because you have to understand this particular technology or this particular publication or work was a academic pursuit it was not a, a industrial pursuit okay so uh, when it comes to academia even if the results are not that great even if it took if if it was very expensive to in fact synthesize that uh, mof so 1 kg of mof you can understand would require a lot of like it will require a lot of reagents so it might not be practically feasible for a publication it might be great 
okay so these are some things that you need to factor in so you can definitely have uh, you know better metal organic frameworks for doing the same thing which can have a lot of practical applications so the practical applications of this particular technology that i just uh, highlighted is still being explored uh, but you know you can come up with better uh, metal organic frameworks or more efficient sort of technology which can do the same thing that they have demonstrated so there is definitely a scope of lot of improvement right uh, just saying the last one converting polymers to monomers is again um you know as the name suggests it's 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 a grave problem uh, you know somewhat somehow getting uh, you know rid of these polymers and plastics and being able to degrade them uh, into monomers so this can be done uh, through microbes through so certain bacteria let's say you you do certain mutations in the bacteria there are certain bacteria which are known to eat plastic or known to degrade plastic um somehow if you can mimic uh, the function of these bacteria or you can uh, do some certain kind of mutations in these bacteria so that they might degrade plastic in a better manner okay that uh, that has also been done for oil as well so basically to 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 remove oil or basically to eat away the oil which has let's say spilled in the oceans and which is still out there in the oceans and you know very harmful for the marine life uh, so one is that approach and then the second approach is a chemical approach that if you can find certain polymers uh that do the same things as genuine plastics do but they are easier to degrade in fact one such polymer i had covered in one of my previous videos for which i will give you the link somewhere over here or over here but apart from that uh, if you can come up with certain chemicals uh, which can in fact degrade these uh, uh, polymers into the subsequent mon monomers it will be easier to recycle it because ultimately the aim is to have a circular process okay to have a well rounded process that you have polymer then you convert into monomer and then the same monomer you can convert back into the polymer basically a recyclable process right so that is the ultimate aim so these were the 10 emerging technologies of course like i said i could not really dive into the details of each one of them uh, but whichever were my favorites i have tried to uh, briefly uh, you know give you an idea on what exactly uh, these technologies do and how they have the potential to change of uh, the future or make it more sustainable all right so anyway i hope you found this video helpful if you did please this please give this video a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um and if you want to share it if you find the video worth it please do share it as well i'll be more than happy um if you do all right thank you for watching i'll see you in the second part very very soon till then take care and bye bye Hey guys so I am a verified educator on an academy and along with that I am also available on the an academy plus platform where I am taking live classes along with other educators so in case you are interested in attending the live classes you can subscribe to the an academy plus platform using my referral code that is SETHI SETHI and that will give you 10% discount all right and in case you are not interested in attending the live classes you can watch the free courses that are available on the an academy for that all you need to do is go to the an academy website or download the an academy learning app and search my name over there that is acti once you do that you will get the access to all the free courses that are available on the an academy platform all right